from a closet, also known as the Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers World Headquarters Studio. This is the JMVO Weekly Primer. Please subscribe, rate, and comment via JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com forward slash podcast. This is episode 19 of the JMVO Weekly Primer. We are all about making your life better through marinating your mind in good stuff. My name is Jim McCarthy, owner, operator, and chief bottle washer at JimMcCarthyVoiceOvers.com. I believe that as business owners, entrepreneurs, and overall salespeople, we are bombarded by negativity every day, and it's the last thing we need. If you want to see your life and your business change for the better, just consume nurturing good stuff. Feed your mind good stuff. Now... Today's episode, I've got a really special guest. He's he's kind of hitting on all fronts. He's the entrepreneur, he's a speaker, and he's an author of books such as High Energy Secrets, which is his, his latest book, and another book with a fantastic name, Average Joe to CEO. <laughs> Way to incorporate, exactly. Uh, seven stages to grow your business to seven figures. He also owns Ajax Union, a B2B digital marketing agency in Brooklyn, New York. Actually, that would be uh, like Long Island, New York, actually, out there, right? Yeah, well, we're in Brooklyn right now, so. In Brooklyn, it's kind of, but uh, Brooklyn's Long Island, you know, it's uh, sort of. Yeah, well, we're all on an island <laughs> at the end of the day. We're on a long much. island in life. Very, very Long Island. It's crazy. Um, so we got in contact with each other. Oddly enough, we were getting the podcast going and I was just telling Joe this just now that the music he has on his conference line, the hold music, you could actually listen to him rap and entertain you while you're waiting to get on the conference line. So that is a sheer bonus and benefit of getting on a conference with you first and foremost. And the funny thing is you used a track that I used on another video that I should really link to. It, it, it's, It was like completely kismet right there. But today you want to talk about your latest book, High Energy Secrets. You're also a uh, pretty pretty savvy at networking as well, correct? Yes, I actually created a networking masterclass, and I took entrepreneurs through nine hours of content. I've been networking for the past five years, and I went from being a person who was totally afraid of networking, afraid of connecting with people, to a place where I have amazing trusted relationships with hundreds and hundreds of successful CEOs, VPs of marketing, directors of sales. I've built amazing relationships and I've learned how to do that one by one. So a lot of the, uh, I do a lot of networking as well. And uh, BNI has taught me a ton about that. You guys engage in BNI? Yeah, BNI is really cool. BNI actually has 30,000 members just in the United States alone. They have close to 300,000 members globally. And I've been studying what Ivan Meisner has built. And it's really, really powerful because people think that networking is about going to those one-off events and just meeting random people. No, that's called a one-night stand. And that's not going to build a meaningful relationship that can create a lifetime of benefit. See, what you want to do is you want to find a few people and meet with them often and build trust and build relationships because it doesn't matter who you're connected with. It matters that you're deeply connected with those people because everybody has 100 to 200 people that they know pretty well. And if you can tap into that network, then you're just a few degrees away from your ideal client. I actually interviewed uh, Ivan um, about two months ago. Meisner, yeah. Yeah. Back on June 5th, it's the, uh, let me pull it up here. I want to say it's probably episode 11 or 12. But, um, yeah, he, he's, he's considered to be the um, father of modern networking. He's the one who created BNI. And BNI was almost created out of necessity because he had to uh, find a way to spur business. And you're absolutely right. They talk about it. It's more about farming than it is hunting. Yeah, and I'm starting a meetup group now, a LinkedIn meetup group, but doing my second event tonight. I have 57 people coming to it tonight. Nice. And, you know, my, my last group, I built up to 5,000 people. And this group, my goal is to build it up to 30,000 LinkedIn users because I'm doubling down on LinkedIn. So that's nice. really what I'm up to now. Very cool. But well, you're here to talk. You want to talk about your book. Yeah, so let me explain to you what happened. Six years ago, I was 265 pounds. And I don't know if you've ever been that large, I used to think that I had big bones, but really I had a big appetite. 
And I used to eat all the wrong things. And I just thought I was unlucky. But what I found was once I started to research why I was overweight and why I had these low energy levels, I realized that a lot of it has to do with my habits. I would drink six Snapples a day. Every single day I would drink six Snapples a day. Costco was my friend because they sold Snapple wholesale and they also had my favorite size 42 stretch pants. So you could imagine what I looked like when I was 265 pounds and my energy was really low. I thought energy comes from food. It didn't come from food. So once I figured out how to do it and keep it off for the past six years, people started coming over to me. And they're like, Joe, you have incredible energy. You look amazing. How do you do it? So I said, you know what? I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write 90 pages that are ADD friendly called High Energy Secrets, where I take you through my step-by-step -step process. And I'll give you a couple of tips. Number one is drink water. Most people don't know that you are 80% water and a 5% drop in hydration is scientifically proven to have a 30% drop in energy. People don't realize this and they wonder. I was speaking to a friend of mine. He's like, Joe, I have such low energy today. I said, how much water did you drink? He's like, I had coffee, but I didn't have water yet. I was like, you're dehydrated, severely dehydrated. You got to hyperhydrate, drink up. And I see you're holding your coffee cup now. It's amazing. No, I'm no, this is, I have these. This is water in here, brother. Mm. Yeah. That's this incredible. Tumbler. That's this your is, tumbler, uh, your tumbler. My on my tumbler. We, uh, we've actually been drinking a lot of tea lately because we hear that's a little bit better for the uh, gut rather than coffee um and when i go out and do networking or meet people i'm always having a soda water with either lime or lemon i honestly as i get older i just the sodas they just don't do it for me anymore i just don't really like them right it's all a matter of what you're used to people don't realize this they're like oh i don't like water i don't like water i don't like water but if you don't like water it's because you don't drink water <laughs> if you don't like doing search engine optimization is because you're not very good at it and you're not doing it often. If you don't like LinkedIn, it's because you're not engaging in it. It's not because LinkedIn's not your friend. People that say, I'm not tech savvy. Ever heard somebody say, I'm not tech savvy? Oh, yeah. It's because they don't mess with tech. They're afraid to do the wrong thing and that it's going to blow up. Tech's not going to blow up. You might screw it up, but then you'll, fix, you'll figure out how to fix it and you'll build more confidence. Same thing with water. Water is what your brain is made up of, what your body's mostly made up of. And I have these party cups that I buy at Costco now because mm. I love to party. <laughs> and I drink water in the cups. That's the key. The key is drink water. That's See? number one. Number two is there are five ingredients that are creating fat in our body. You know what those five ingredients are? Creating fat? Yeah. What creates mm. fat in our body? Most people think that if you eat fat, you'll get fat. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Actually, healthy fats are really good for you, and they don't create fat in your body. What creates fat in your body is stored potential energy. And mm -hmm. where stored potential energy comes from sugar, from flour, rice, from potatoes, from pasta. Those are the things that creates fat storages in our body. And so people are wondering... Why am I getting fatter? I said, well, how much flour, sugar, rice, potatoes, and pasta are you eating each day? And they're like, well, don't you have to have all your servings of every type of food? Not if you have tons of stored energy in your body, you don't have to. You know, some days I don't eat anything at all, and I still feel fantastic because I have my electrolytes. There are certain electrolytes you need in your body, and I'm talking about vitamin, sugar, water. I'm talking mm -hmm. about real electrolytes like sodium, potassium like magnesium, like calcium, like really understanding what it is and where it comes from will help you be able to keep your energy levels up. So these are things they did not understand. And they say that if you have the wrong strategy, you're going to be wasting your time. The right strategy will save you a decade. And for me, people say I look a decade younger now that I lost the weight and I have more energy than ever. So I'm just super pumped, super excited, super grateful that I'm able to share this message and allow people to, somebody contacted me yesterday, said, Joe, I read your book a month ago. I started doing what you said, and it was totally against what my nutritionist said. But when I was listening to my nutritionist, I actually gained 40 pounds. When I listened to you, I lost 25 pounds, and my doctor told me to get off my blood pressure medication. Nice. I'm, like, I'm just sharing my experience. Well, it, it, and it's not as hard as people make it out to be. I think it overcomplicates a lot of stuff. I always tell people, if you really want to start eating better, stick to the outside of the grocery store in terms of, you know, go around the edges of it rather than inside where the aisles are. 
Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm no bastion of health by looking at me, believe you me, but I once was, and I know what I did and didn't do. Um, but a lot of people, they overcomplicate, uh, complicate that as well as entrepreneurial growth and business growth. And a lot of these things tie in, the more you simplify it, the better you start realizing it's not as hard as you made it out to be. Right. The answer is usually simple. It's very hard to do the simple things. Because it's mm -hmm. difficult for you to start building new habits because we're afraid of change. Change is the very essence of life. But fear creeps in because you want to resist change because you're afraid if you change, you might die. So we end up trying to survive instead of thrive. So I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of thriving instead of surviving. And if you can get into that zone as an entrepreneur, both in your finances, in your health, in your relationships, and instead of surviving, take a risk and live a little bit. Take a, li a risk and take your life to the next level by trying to change your mindset from having a fixed mindset where you're afraid of change to having a growth mindset where you thrive with change and you're able mm -hmm. to experience that every aspect of life. If people just made small shifts, okay, and, and on one hand with being healthy, like what I've been doing, I've been trying to walk. And today I even did it. I'm already hit 10,000 steps. But this wow. morning I was out there walking. You know, uh, it started raining down on me. But I mean, I made an effort. I've been walking for a while, but I made a small shift to walk an extra, I don't know, quarter mile. Um, but I typically try to do about three, four miles four days a week. A small shift like that combined with just cutting soda out of your diet and doing what you're talking about, drinking water, can make a huge impact to somebody who's, you know, overweight massively overweight yeah and people don't realize that your body just wants to get clean you just want to get clean and the way that you clean your cells is with the lymph fluid and the lymph fluid doesn't have a pump the blood has a pump Do you know what the pump is for the blood the heart mm -hmm. but what is the pump for the lymph fluid there's three times more lymph fluid in your body than there is blood the pump for your lymph fluid is actually movement breathing mm. So when you go for a walk, that's why walking is so much fun. Um, but jumping actually helps you be able to cleanse your body, cleanse your cells. And when you do that, your body's able to get rid of all the toxins and all the garbage that make you hoard fat. Fat actually is a protective device in your body. People don't know this, but when you're... Look at this. I'm going to jump for you a little bit here. I'm you got the trampoline? You yeah, a little mini trampoline in the office. I mean, <laughs> get your energy out. For those not watching Look. this, Joe's jumping up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It gets everything going. And what happens is you're able to have more energy because your cells are cleaner. And when they're cleaner, they're able to conduct energy better. And your fat actually is there to, if you have a lot of toxins in your body, you start hoarding fat. And the reason you start hoarding fat is to protect your internal organs. If you're in a dehydrated state and you have tons of toxins, tons of metals, tons of garbage in your body, what's going to end up happening is your body's going to want to start hoarding as much fat as possible and not getting rid of it to protect your internal organs from your lack of hydration. It's just normal for people to be majorly overweight when they are feeding themselves garbage because of their habits that are not aligned with health and vitality. No. Yeah. Well, that's what that's what uh, Robbins does before he goes on stage. He jumps on a trampoline. He actually does that continuously throughout the day. He's got a, his own personal mini trampoline set up on side stage. Have you watched his documentary? Yes, I am not your guru. I'm a very big yeah. fan of Robbins. Yeah, I love yeah. his stuff. I actually went there with a bunch of entrepreneurs, and we had a really great time. And then I took my team there. Um, I took some of my employees there, and we had a really, really great time there, and we learned all about health and vitality. And after that, everyone started drinking water like crazy. Because he's so all that. very it's, powerful. It's 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 a life getting giving substance, and you know, I try to tell I sh I tell I tell people all the time, the small shifts are what really matters. You know, don't look at the top of the mountain as something to be conquered or get intimidated by. Remember that mountain's got to be climbed up one step at a time. Okay, and those small shifts as you go along really do make a difference, both in being a businessman or a salesperson, you know, a small shift for a salesperson can be making an extra five calls a day, an extra 10 calls a day. Um, yeah. 
for somebody who needs more money, it can be, well, hey, why don't we make it a family thing and go, go garage sailing on Saturday morning and flip the stuff on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, you know, and, and make an extra 10, 15, 20 grand a year. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's yeah. a really small shift. You know, and people yeah, it's the small shifts that good. matter. And, yeah, and people give up. You know, once, mm -hmm. once they don't get the results that they wanted, they end up giving up and end up not getting, you know, getting further and further and further into a place of disillusion and a place of being resigned and a place of being cynical, being cynical with themselves and being cynical with the people that they care about. But when you were pushing 260, what was the catalyst that made you stick to it? I mean, what was the thing? There had to be a beacon in the mind that you went back to. to I realize, you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to grow one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. My agency was number 178 on the Inc. 5000. And so I had, I had success in my business. The problem mm -hmm. is that that success did not translate into my health. I, I had success in one area of my life, but my other area of my life was suffering. Mm -hmm. So one day I realized that, oh my gosh, I don't have the energy to hang out with my kids the way that I want to. I don't have the energy to be able to run around. I just love sitting on the couch now because I don't really have the energy to run around. So I need to change up my game. I need to change my game up. If I want to be successful, really successful, I got to figure out how to change my game. So I decided that, you know what, I want more energy because life is all about energy. In order for me to have more energy, I got to get rid of all this excess weight. Mm -hmm. But how do I do to this? You know, it's, it, it's very, very difficult. It's almost impossible. So I started researching it and I realized that I need, a, I need to surround myself with people and I need to get people to help motivate me and I need to get my facts straight because I thought that energy comes from food. Energy doesn't come from food. It actually takes more energy to digest food than it does to, to just live. That's the most energy intensive activity that you can do is eat and then mm -hmm. digest food. So what I decided I was going to do is I decided I was going to publicly ask for help on Facebook and see who can help me. And I said, if you like my post, I will go one minute, run one minute per like. And it started into this whole evolution of, me getting attention in order for me to be able to do good things for myself. Interesting. That's innovative. Yeah. And I yeah. write about that in the book. That's accountability right there. People are holding your feet to the fire. Yeah, because otherwise, you know what? I'm all alone. Nobody knows what I'm eating. Nobody knows what I'm doing. But if I'm using it as kind of like this public display of, you know, I was already a public person. I was on Fox Business Network. I was writing articles, but I wasn't authentic because I showed up. And I was extremely overweight and huffing and puffing and people saw right through me. They're like, who is this guy? Why should I listen to him? He's not really successful. Right. Like to myself, I said to myself, I'm successful financially. I'm successful in business. I'm successful in marketing. But in life, I'm not doing so well. I'm not doing so well. So what, how can I really do well in every area of my life? And my health was the number one thing because that's a driver of everything else. When I was about 23, 24, 25, I had a deep desire to finally see my abs. And I ended up wow. doing uh, Body for Life, which was written by uh, Bill Phillips back in the day. He's the guy who started um, EAS, Applied Experimental Sciences, that company that came out with Myoplex and a um, whole bunch of different product lines that he had out in Colorado. He was a self-made multi, multi-millionaire many, many years ago. He ended up selling the company, but he was like, uh, he was the guy who inspired me. I'm like, crap, you can do that. And I, I would see the before and after pictures in 12 weeks and say, you could do that in 12 weeks. These guys were going from like my size to ripped in 12 weeks. I'm like, well, if that's the case, I'm just going to do it. So if you're not, if the, for those of you listening who hasn't seen the video, Joe has been moving this whole time, walking around his office in constant motion because motion yeah. creates energy. Yeah, yeah. And people in motion stay in motion. Inertia. Things in motion stay in motion. Inertia. So I'm constantly doing stuff. And also, you know, like if you're just in one place and you're not <clears throat> engaged in the conversation in that way, like it's, for me, I realize that when I drive, I'm much more engaged in a conversation than if I'm just sitting at my desk and I have distractions. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing something else with my body, my mind is able to focus on a conversation or whatever it is. So sometimes I doodle or sometimes I go for walks or I have a lot of space here in the office. As you can see, we have a pretty big office. 
Um, so I'm able to just walk around and, and schmooze with you. Well, when I sold cars back when the back in uh, I don't know 2013 or so, uh, if I didn't sell a car, something that always helped me was just taking a walk around the back lot, and it would help clear your mind and get focused and really help you uh, just kind of recalibrate the uh, losses you would have in that business over time. Right, and it really did help. I mean, it's it was amazing how it changed my my perspective on things. Now, some of the yeah. other things you do, the um, you're part of a digital marketing agency. You've also done a lot of, uh, you're also contributing author and article. Uh, you can write articles for a bunch of different magazines as well and uh, publications, correct? Yeah. So like Forbes and like entrepreneur.com. What, what I love writing, where I love writing the most is LinkedIn these days. I've been mm. doing a lot of activity on LinkedIn. Are you, are you very active on LinkedIn? Um, not probably not as much as I need to be. Right. I'm, so it's just more LinkedIn's, be LinkedIn's becoming much, much more popular now than it's ever been, especially for professionals. Like if your target market is CEOs, senior executives, or just professionals that are out there that are looking to connect from a business standpoint in a business way, LinkedIn has half a billion professionals on it. Just in the United States, they have tens of millions of people that are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So if you're not taking LinkedIn seriously, then you're not taking networking seriously. So for me, when I started, decided that networking was important to me, I started really learning the art of LinkedIn. And after Microsoft bought LinkedIn for $26 billion, I realized there's a lot of value here. And they also changed around their algorithm and the way things work. And now LinkedIn video is very powerful. So I do, I try to do every single day, I try to do a LinkedIn video. Yeah, you can um, post so, it to it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, the funny thing about LinkedIn, and we're not talking about getting connected with somebody and instantly sending them a message, selling them on whatever it is that you're doing. Because I, I get a ton of that. And it's like LinkedIn for That's a while annoying. Became, became spam city where, you know, you'd make a connection and all of a sudden you're getting hit up. Hey, let's have, you know, I, I, so I see what you're doing and I believe we could do a much better job and blah, blah. Let's have a call. When can we have a call? Whoa. Dinner and drinks right. first, pal. All right. Dinner and drinks before the call. And for some reason, you know, sometimes people send me these really long messages and I either ignore it or I just send them some random message to see if it's a bot or not. I totally throw the bot off. Um, and if it's a human, we end up having a really interesting conversation. Like somebody sent me this really long message and I just replied with, what's your favorite color? Mm -hmm. And they were kind of like, no response, done. Yeah. It was over. And I was like, well, okay, you know moving on. That's the Valpac approach. It's it's working somehow because they still do it, you know, and, and it's it's all a numbers game at that point. Somebody's going to respond. I get that a lot now on, on Instagram. People will try and, you know, hey, I see what you're doing. You could be a really good fit for us. I'm, okay, well, it's kind of generic. I had one guy reach out to me that actually direct engaged me and did it in such a way that he got my attention. And I've actually interviewed him on the show a couple of uh, wow. episodes before. Um, and he's, they're handling all my marketing for Instagram and everything. And they do a fantastic job. Um, and, but he had, he, he had mastered the, the, the personal touch aspect of I, what I call surprising Broca. You know, the, the penetrating of our brain that filters out all the messages. We, we're bombarded with 6,000 messages a day, and only very few get through to, you know, the, that cortex in our brain. Yeah, and the key is to be authentic. Yeah. The key is to know who your target market is, like who your target audience is. And the key is to just follow up. You mm. know, if you follow up enough, you're going to get through to somebody. No one has ever followed up with me a hundred times. Nobody. Mm. People give up after two times, after three times, after five times. They just give up. But if you don't give up, if this is who you need to connect to, and you're constantly engaging and engaging and engaging, and you will get through. You will get That's through either be because you got through or because you got a restraining order. <laughs> and it's not, a, and it's a non. You got to be non-linear about it in terms of. It can't just be, hey, I'm following up for the sake of following up. You know, you no, there are three different ways. I, there yeah. are three different ways. I learned this from Adrian Miller. There are three different ways to follow up. One of them is by sending them information, mm -hmm. like valuable information that they will value. The second one is by making introductions to them, to people that they can value. And the third one is to inviting them, invitations. Mm -hmm. So information, introductions, and invitations. And if you do the three I's and you get the I away from it, you know, you focus on them and not you, 
then you're going to be able to be more successful at getting their attention and keeping their attention. So for example, I would say, hey, Jim, who do you want to meet? And you might say, I want to meet successful entrepreneurs that are really good on podcasts. Like, okay, I can introduce you to a few coaches and entrepreneurs that want to be on podcasts. Okay, who else do you want to meet, Jim? You'd be like, well, I want to meet people who need voiceovers because I'm a voiceover guy or I'm a media coach or I'm a content creator or whatever it is, whoever you want to meet. I'm going to introduce you to those people because I have those people in my network. And then I'll get your attention by sending you some interesting information. Like I'll send you access to my motivation Facebook group where I have close to 600 entrepreneurs and every single day we talk about a concept like awareness and consciousness and goal setting and taking our life to the next level and overcoming fear. And we're super, super small but engaged group of hungry entrepreneurs that want to go from frustration to motivation. Or you might say, you know, Joe, could you invite me to, I want to go to networking events in New York City. And I'll be like, all right, well, I have a few networking events that I go to, but I'd love for you to come and maybe do a five minute talk at my networking event that I'm hosting tonight and 57 people are coming. So that's how I try to add value to people. And when you're consistently adding value to people, some people will notice and they'll be like, all right, what can I do for you? Other people will just take and which is fine. I'm, I'm here to give. So well, it's that it's you're taking that whole notion of what I call be them centric to a whole other level. Um, Grant Cardone, back when I we interviewed him on another podcast I produce, he says the new currency is speed. Um, but Brad Lee, on the other hand, he said the new currency is relationships, and he's big on doubling down on relationships. And he's one of those guys who's an up and coming influencer as well. Uh, he he disagrees with me calling him an influencer because he says if I tell people to show up. Uh, you know, at, on, at the Las Vegas sign to come get something, you know, not many people are probably going to respond. He says, I'm just real about that. But I think he's an influencer. I think he's on the rise. And he says that he's absolutely right. And I think a lot of people neglect that when it comes to the digital age, where it's so easy to reach a bunch of people at once. It still comes down. Don't to spray and pray. No, right. Don't spray and pray. Instead, have a good day. Have a good day. Connect authentically one person at a time. Sure. When I do my Facebook lives, I'm talking to one person. I'm not yeah. talking to a thousand people. I was, thinking, I was talking to my admin today. And she's like, every time I watch, she's like, I'm having a really hard time in my life today. And when I have a difficult day and I watch your live, I feel like you're literally talking to me. Like I'm the only person there. And I said, that's my intention. My intention is, you know, I'm only talking to you because you're the only person that watches. Were you in radio at some point? I was never in radio, but I've been developing my voice. I was really afraid of public speaking and really afraid of putting myself out there, but I took it very seriously to use courage to overcome my fears. And for a long time, I was working on this. And I've been on over 100 podcasts, and I've done over 2,000 minutes of just online video and hundreds of li Facebook lives of me just practicing, trying to get rid of the little ums and the, l and the long ands or the little idiosyncrasies. I used to say basically every other word. Me too. I used to pace like crazy when I was nervous. Would you say? I, 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 the basically is a big crutch for me. Yeah, so if I slow down, if I slow down to the point where I'm okay with sounding slower because people that are listening to podcasts, they're actually doing something else in the meantime. So if you're talking really quick and you're giving a lot of information like an ADD entrepreneur and you're not stopping, then I'm going to be able to take everything in. They're just going to get nervous and close it. So what you want to do is you want to not be a used car salesman and talk really fast. Instead, you want to slow down. You want to say things that resonate with people. And when you can give your message deliberately, and slowly and with patience you know somebody once said to me at a public speaking seminar they said joe when you speak very fast in public you're actually apologizing that's a method of apologizing and i was like wow interesting wow that's so interesting i'm actually apologizing when i speak fast what i need to do it slowed down because I've been given permission to take the stage. So instead of apologizing, own the stage. 
Own it. So, so I guess that Gary Vaynerchuk would be apologizing quite a bit. <laughs> Are you aware of you? You got to be aware of Gary Vaynerchuk. I love Gary Vaynerchuk and I love his stuff. And Gary Vaynerchuk has the same message. I heard him speak five times, and his message is very simple. And it's the same message over and over and over. So for him, he can go fast if he wants. But if you have a vast array of content and you have a tremendous amount of things to say, what you want to do is you want to connect with your audience and slow down so that they can actually get it. If you're just talking to people just to inspire them and motivate them and you have the same message that you're saying over and over and over, you can say it fast. He's putting on a show. It's a great show. It's an entertaining show. But at the end of the day, he's talking to a certain audience and he's doing it in his style, in his way. And you'll notice that when he has a point he wants to make, he pauses, mm -hmm. he says it real slow, and then he repeats it. I'm a big fan of the dramatic, what I call the pregnant pause. And in talk radio, when I worked in Vegas, there were masters at it. There was a, a host named Tom Likas, and the first 15 minutes of his show, or the top of the hour into the first and second segments, he would do that. He would set up the topic and then do pregnant pauses, sometimes stretching out five, six, sevens, uh, seven seconds. And on broadcast radio, that's a lifetime because as a listener, it so draws you in even more. We, like You're absolutely right with what you're saying. And the pregnant pause is a great tool. Um, and the funny because thing you're is... you're not sure. Something. Yeah. And the funny thing is... Not what sure what yeah, you're addressing ahead. before was the content. You know, I struggle, and this is the reason why I do this podcast uh, with other people, is because I think I need to be constantly coming up with new content. That's not necessarily the case. I worked with Dr. Laura. I've worked with, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different people. They talk about the same thing over and over again. Dave Ramsey will tell you he can do his radio show in six minutes. But he's managed to do it for 20 some odd years. It's the same thing over. It's you're right. It's entertainment. Bottom line. It's and and you mix it with current events. You mix it with stories. You mix it with listeners' questions. You mix it with other ideas that people bring you as you live your life. Mm -hmm. But if you know what your truth is, right? My values are very simple. I have three core values: curiosity, creativity, and levity. Those are my three core values. Mm. In my business, my business has three short values. Like, in, if you know your truth, your simple truth, you can tell your truth in, like, seconds, in minutes. You can tell your truth, and then you're done. But if you want to be an entertainer, if you want to be able to get attention and help other people be able to get to a certain goal or get to a certain place, then it's all about how do you take your knowledge, your expertise, and package it in a way that people will accept it, that people will love it, that people will appreciate it, that people will remember it, and you'll be able to change lives. And for that, it takes a certain amount of chutzpah. Mm -hmm. It takes a certain amount of chutzpah to have your message and repeat it over and over and over in different ways. And you know what? You're not always going to have the same people listening to it. You know, People tune in and tune out. And the people that are tuned in sometimes need to hear it. Some, some people tell me, Joe, you say the same thing sometimes often. And, you know, I try to give my, like, I'm like you. I always think I have to bring new things, bring new things, bring new things. But at the end of the day, they t people tell that listen to me religiously. They say, Joe, I love when you repeat the same thing over and over and over because I need to hear it many, many times until it finally clicks. It makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, also, you know, interviewing people is powerful as well because you always cross pollinate your ideas with their ideas. I try to you know, make my big I, I set this up as an interview in the beginning and it was something that Brad Lee told me. He says, Man, I don't set it up at all. He says, We just we just shoot the we shoot the breeze, you know. And he wants me to come out and to Vegas and be on his and I've adopted that and it's funny because I have that radio background and I've been around a lot of people in radio who set it up like an interview they want to be prepared have the questions but sometimes those questions are the catalyst to get the thing going and then see where the conversation is naturally goes because sometimes people just want to hear a conversation 
between two people, people do want to hear the conversation they want to be entertained they don't want to hear the same old boring question over and over and over with the same old boring answers over and over and over. i had a podcast and for a long time i was just interviewing people and, and just asking them seven questions mm -hmm. and i had a friend of mine who listened to 20 episodes and he's like dude it, you got to change it up yeah because and the truth is i was afraid to have an authentic conversation with these people I thought I needed to take people through some type of a process. Mm -hmm. And the reality is you just have fun. You just have a good time. Connect with your host or connect with your guest and just have a good time. Yeah. And especially you when you children, connect with right? different. I do. Three. Three. Very nice. I have five. Very, very nice. I see you put your children on Facebook. What do you say about people who are afraid to put their kids on social media? I think that's going to happen eventually. You know, it's... There's a notion of, well, I don't want to do it uh, and let the kid have the option to do that for themselves. And then as a past parents, we all kind of do it and fall into that uh, culture shaping that happens. Um, and we used to, when I was with you know, culture shaping, meaning that we can actually shape the world around us by putting stuff out there. Now we have these platforms that can reach millions of people. Uh, and depending on how much value we provide, we can influence people, whether, you know, from the smallest increment on up to massive volumes. And I think with children, what do I think about it? I mean, I do it. So I, I must be in agreement with it. So. Yeah, no, I do it as well. I, but I used to be afraid of doing it. And I was one of those people that made those excuses. It's not fair. They're children. It's not fair to put them on social media, blah, blah, blah. But now it's like, dude, just, this is your family. If you mm -hmm. were walking into a restaurant and you saw your friends there, would you cover your kids' faces because it's not fair to bring them into a restaurant so nobody sees them? Now, do you let no. your kids have their own social media accounts? If they want to, but they, not, they haven't asked me for it, I'm not going to force them to have it. My daughter started painting pictures, and I said, you know, you should probably put that on Instagram and start building an audience. See, that's the other thing, is that if you teach them how to do that from an early age and help them to understand that this is the world in which you're going to live and grow up in, that the more you do this and the earlier you do this, the better, hopefully, you'll understand what really makes this whole thing tick in terms of being them-centric, putting value out there. And... The next generation of, of people are going to be, uh, it's going to be all online. And yeah, that's just the way I tried to make a, it's true. And I tried to make a Gmail account with my kids, but they're too, G, Google says they're too young. They have to be of yeah. a certain age to have a Gmail account. So when yeah. I put their real date of birth, Google complained. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to give them a Gmail account for now. Yeah. Well, my daughter's got an Instagram account. My son has got, they both have Musical.ly accounts. Um, it's it's a way to possibly make a living down the road. Not possibly. It's pretty much going to be that way. Yeah. yeah. Anytime you get people's attention, mm -hmm. if you can add value to them, you can make money. So if you have someone's attention, you sell them lemonade as a kid. Mm -hmm. Or in my case, I used to sell mazes. I mm -hmm. used to, because I picked up everything really quickly. So I used to doodle and I would create these really intricate mazes and people would come to me like, can I have the maze? I said, yeah, for 25 cents, you can have it. <laughs> and if you want me to make you a custom one, it's a dollar. Mm -hmm. I did that and with my daughter amazing. once. But it's amazing how schools will not allow you to do that because my daughter one time came home and she was had she had like four little doodles that she was doing with her friends' names and they were putting in the back of like a binder. So they had custom made placards that she was doing with colors and everything being very creative and artistic. And I came in to give her a kiss goodnight and I was looking at what she was doing and I said you know, what's this for? Well, I'm just doing them. And I said, okay, well, how much are you charging? And she looked at me and I said, seriously, why are you not charging for this? Are you charging? No. Okay. What would I charge? I said, well, $3 on special for two. And she kind of, I said, I think it's worth it. Don't you? And she says, yeah, I said, give it a, sh give it a shot. I said, you're, all, you're, you're, all, you're the answer will always be no. If you don't ask the next day she came That's home, she sold, she sold seven more. Oh my God! Said, now you got fourteen more dollars that you didn't have before, and how long will this take you? She said about two hours. I said, "Great, you made seven bucks an hour." Um, she went back to the school, but the school uh, said you can't do that. So, right there's that. Well, they don't support entrepreneurs because it's not run by entrepreneurs. I think I had to think, think inside a box. That's what school yeah. does. 
And that's how schools are set up. They're set up to teach you to work in a factory. Obedient workers. And how to get yeah. into debt. Yeah. How to get into debt. And that's why us as parents that are entrepreneurs, we have, we have the responsibility to teach our children that you got to have critical thinking skills. Mm-hmm. And you got to learn to question authority. And you got to learn to have rules, but also learn when you need to break the rules. Mm-hmm. That's something so, that we do. We do pretty regularly here at the McCarthy household is, you know, the, uh, the question is often asked, okay, that's great. How do you monetize that? How do you make money? Right. It? You know, my son, I've got an old lawnmower and I said, listen, I'll, I'll keep, I'll, I want to get a new lawnmower, but I'll keep the old one around. If you guys ever want to go out and make 20 bucks a lawn around the neighborhood, which undoubtedly someone's going to hire you because I've seen some of the frigging lawns around here. If you just knock on the door and be like, look, guy, I'll cut your lawn for 20 bucks right now. What do you think? All right. That's the pitch. And, and just go for And I said, guys, you'll be making, you know, you do five lawns. You made a hundred dollars. Just go out and do it. That's oh, amazing. it's so hot That's out. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> so, but I mean, I get it. Is, I it is hot out. Yeah. I didn't have that kind of mentality. I had a friend of mine who used to break down Camaros. He, used to, he would keep a Camaro. It was the most ugliest thing I've ever, think I've ever seen, but he would buy a Camaro, put it underneath the tarp outside his parents' garage, part it out. And on a three hundred dollar Camaro, he'd probably make five six grand. Wow! I didn't realize it, you know. And I'm sitting there, you know. I was in a band with him and everything. It was up in New Fairfield, Connecticut. I was in a band with him, uh, and I'm seeing him just cash flow constantly. And I, I'm like, well, sorry guys, I gotta go to work. <laughs> you know, it's like, what was I thinking? I should have done it a lot. Yeah. Earlier. But and my father yeah. was a business owner. Oh really? What type of business did he have? He was in telecom. He uh, actually in the Westchester County area, uh, very big business that did uh, telecom in the 80s and 90s. And that, well, he was also in the 70s too. But um, telephone interconnect business, tri-state telephone is what it was called. But he wow. was always a, you know, kind of a self-starter, always his own guy. And uh, it just, I guess I would call myself a late bloomer because- A late bloomer. Yeah. I'm self-aware that oh. I know that about me. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Very, very nice. Well, it was great doing this, uh, this talk. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. You're yeah, a man, really well, good host. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, how can they find you, Joe? Where, where do people go? So if you want to find my book, go to High Energy Secrets on Amazon. Just search for High Energy Secrets. This is what, if you're watching the YouTube or you're watching the Facebook Live, this is what the book looks like. And I have a picture of me jumping in the back. It's really cute. Um, you can go to my website, joeappledown.com, sign up to my weekly newsletter. And I encourage all of you to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So you can follow my charades and my crazy stuff that I'm doing. Um, I also have a Facebook group that I'm helping 1,000 hungry entrepreneurs go from frustration to motivation. We're up to 600 members. So if you want to join, feel free to join it. It's facebook.com slash groups slash mojovation. Right on. They can get all that stuff at either of those websites, correct? Yes. Yes. Contact. You can check it all out and get it right there. Or you can go to joeappledum.com and you can find all the information right there. Beautiful. Beautiful. Joe, thanks for having me on. I would have to say, aside from your podcast, this has got to be the best con- podcast you've ever been a part of, right? Yes, of course. You are the best. <laughs> you are the best. If you're listening Stay to motivated. the motivated. JM- Stay motivated. JMVO Weekly Primer, episode 19. Thank you, Joe, for being a part of it. Please subscribe, like, follow, do all that stuff. And uh, let me know if you have any guests that you would think would be a good part of the JMVO Weekly uh, Primer. Tomorrow, we are also coming back to Facebook uh, live about 10 o'clock on uh, Central Standard Time. We're going to be having Matt Monero for episode 20, so make sure you tune in for that as well. Joe, thank you so much for being on, and uh, I I know you, I like you, and I will find a way to refer you business because that's a big part of the networking equation. Thank you. I look forward to that, and likewise.